Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be drawing some horror monsters and killers into cute character designs. I love horror movies, and one of the horror movie franchises that really got me into horror movies in the first place is Scream. The first Scream is really a deconstruction of horror movies, and more specifically slasher movies. So um, in it, multiple characters, including the killer Ghostface, talk about horror movies and the rules within them. Um, and when Ghostface calls, he always asks his future victims, What's your favorite scary movie? I decided to put a phone in his hand as well as a knife because, well, he always calls his victims and he usually uses a knife to kill them. Um, so I also wanted to keep the rough silhouette of the outfit that he wears. Um, canonically, it's like a cheap Spirit Halloween uh, Grim Reaper costume. So it's like a cheap polyester black um, like hooded cloak and this very iconic rubber white mask. Um, I decided to keep the mask and and I had him wearing a hoodie instead, so it looks more like modern and cute. Um, and then I put a varsity jacket over top of the hoodie. The reason that I did that uh, is kind of a spoiler for the first killer of Scream. Um, so if you don't want to know who it is and you haven't seen the movie yet, just like skip forward like 20 seconds. But basically I put the varsity jacket on him because the first killer in Scream is two high school students who go to school with the main character, Sydney, um, one of which is her boyfriend. Um, and I just thought the varsity jacket kind of speaks to their like age high school kind of range. Um, I generally just kind of tried to style him like a really like cool e-boy looking kind of guy. Um, I just thought it fit. Uh, of all the slasher killers, he seems like the youngest and the most like I don't know, <laughs> like an edgy emo boy. Um, I put some knife tattoos on the back of his hands um, and I tried to keep the color palette really like muted and monochromatic um, with sort of like a cool blue tint uh, just because I felt like it fit better. I didn't think any crazy colors really made sense for him. Ghostface really revels in the like tormenting of his victims, which is why he goes to the trouble of calling them first and stalking them and getting to know them and presenting them games uh, to give them the impression that they could possibly escape. Uh, so I wanted to give him a really sadistic look on his face um, and generally just make him look really like scary and chaotic because I think that's kind of the personality that Ghostface usually embodies. Let me know what you think of the final result here. I really like him, but uh, I'm worried he might still be a little too scary. <laughs> Next up, I'm going to be talking about the ring, or Ringu, and the monster from that. Ringu is the original. It's a Japanese horror movie that was remade in America in the early 2000s, um, but they do have some differences, though the core is still the same. Uh, it's a movie about a haunted VHS tape that when you watch it, curses you to die in seven days. Now in the tape, you see what looks like an eclipse. Uh, you see a woman brushing her hair in a mirror, and then you see this little girl with black hair all over her face. In the American version, they call her Samara. In the Japanese, they call her Sadako. Um, I don't know if they just thought that Americans couldn't handle a Japanese name, but I'm gonna call her Sadako from here on out. Um, and basically, I just wanted to make her cute. I've always felt bad for Sadako in this movie, in both of them actually. Um, basically, the narrative of the story is that this little girl's mother thought that she was evil and basically ended up killing her. Um, and so she becomes a ghost because she's so sad and betrayed uh, that she's been murdered by her own parent. So the main character of the film is really trying to solve this mystery of this cursed VHS tape before their seven days runs out, and they end up discovering more information about this little girl and what happened with her, and basically they find out that she was like pretty abused, it seems like she was really neglected, um, and it turns out that the image that we see of the eclipse is actually the image that Sadako saw as she was lying at the bottom of the well looking up as her mother closed the the lid of the well. So even though Samara or Sadako ends up being a um, hardcore ghost who kills tons of people, I still feel kind of bad for her. Um, she also contributed to horror this classic scene of her crawling out of the television, which is really quite iconic and terrifying. 
In trying to make her more fashionable and cute, um, I actually had a lot of good stuff to work with from the beginning. She has a white dress on. It's very simple in the movie, um, so I decided to give it some more details and make it look sort of elegant and cute. And I just took that long black hair of hers and had her peeking out from under it. I thought that was adorable. And I gave her a little necklace with a seven on it to symbolize the seven days you have to live when you watch her tape. Next up, I wanted to do a more modern character, so I decided to pick Red from Us. Us is the story of a woman returning to her hometown where she had a very traumatic experience as a child and the very first night that they spend back at her old place she is visited by doppelgangers of herself and her family, um, all of which appear in red jumpsuits and start breaking into their home, and everything just goes dramatically downhill from that point forward. I decided in order to make her sort of fashion cuter, I had the red jumpsuit turn into sort of like this long overcoat, um, and I tried to allude to the story and different elements of her design in various other parts of the outfit. Um, I had her holding some scissors, because that is her weapon of choice and I gave her some bunny ears just because uh, they have a lot of bunnies in the area that the doppelgangers live. Um, I decided to keep her spooky little leather glove that she has on one hand and I gave her a necklace of the little people that um, are drawn around on the chalkboard that she's near. Uh, I also put on her shirt sort of a decal of the hands across America symbol, um, the people holding hands together, and then I just gave her like some cute shorts because I felt like it would look really adorable um, underneath her long jacket. Her color palette is dramatically warmer than the other two that I've done so far. Both Ghostface and uh, Sadoko are very cool toned, particularly, uh, well, Samara from the 2000s version of The Ring, um, mostly because I think back in the 2000s they had this like weird blue-green filter over everything. Uh, it kind of looks like the first Twilight movie, um, but uh, it's nice to be able to go to something a little warmer for this character. She has this, of course, bright red suit, um, and she also also just has like a warmer tone to a lot of her stuff like she has uh, this gold scissors and um, this like warm tan colored glove which I ended up using that color in multiple other parts of her design I just thought it would look more harmonious and cute that way this wasn't even really intentional, but I like the way that um, her necklace looks because it looks like puppets kind of hanging on the string. Uh, and that's such a huge part of the narrative of us and the whole sort of horror of the story. After some last minute fiddling with some of the colors, I was done. Let me know what you think of red and if you saw us, if it scared you or not. Next up is a character from a movie franchise that is extremely infamous in the horror community. Uh, whether you hate it or love it, you definitely know of it, and it is Saw. Now in Saw, the actual perpetrator of these terrible games um, is actually kind of like a pretty ordinary looking dude, so I wasn't really inspired to do anything off of him, but he speaks through this puppet named Billy. I always just call the puppet Jigsaw, but that's not actually right um uh but billy is this scary little ventriloquist puppet who um will come on the tv or come tricycling in uh, while people are waking up to their new nightmare um and i thought it would be fun to try to design him um i really wanted to convey that like ventriloquist jaw that he has um so i gave him some like snake bites and i even put a chain on one of them to kind of try to allude to the like lines on the side of the face um that he has since he is uh, you know a puppet <laughs> and of course i put those iconic red spirals on his cheeks um i tried to keep his long crazy hair but make it look a little bit cuter um, and not so crazy um and he's dressed in a very dapper fashion already so i just kind of kept that suit um i added some more little details to it to make it a little bit more uh, human-like and less costumey and I had to keep his shoes I was tempted to change them because they look so silly but um, I, I just couldn't I can bring myself to do it and I had him holding some keys originally I was gonna put a weapon in his hand but then I realized like Billy the puppet's not really a weapon in hand kind of character he's definitely more 
um, about like conveying the rules, the the punishments, and the uh, you know the the sharp things in the room are already there by the time that the puppet comes uh, on screen. So um, I just try to make him look really maniacal and um, sort of allude to the escape room ish elements of Saw. Honestly, I, I was only really able to watch the first one. Uh, after that point, it got a little too intense for me. Um, let me know if you have watched those movies or if you're too scared or too easily like grossed out because they are they are pretty crazy. <laughs> I tried to watch the second one. I had to turn it off because it was making me feel kind of sick. Um, but here here's our boy, our little puppet man. Um, I gave him some nice like pops of red lighting and then he was all done. Let me know which one you would pick to go on a date with if you had to pick one. Oh, and I had a question for you. What's your favorite scary movie? Thank you to all of my patrons, including Al Kappa, Winkus Wonkus, Jacqueline, Biddy Boo, Blue, Razor57, Zero Expectations, Woo Lu Luna, Lilia Lur, Hazel Tiffia, Elizabeth Ward, The Expressive Poker Face, Morrissey Axolotl, Big McLarge Huge, Chris Strahd, Subaki, Giliana Davis, Yume Lily, John Muscat, Snow White, Hidden Squid, The Becky, Liliana Hammond, Lauren, Nya Lavali, Angel File, Q Musgrove, Trace, Nicole Ludwak, Nicolette Queen, Rainwater Pearls, Ice Cream Pal, Best Kaiju, Lion, Storm Scribbles, Tom David Johansson, Ivan Rodriguez, Ilaria Louie, Nora Cornelson, Joseph Copel, Clockwork Construct, Rachel Singh, Dr. Casket, Your Boy ST, JJ Jade, and of course, Lib 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 Lib.